All right, again, this is our final round of 60 seconds. Thanks to everyone for sticking around. A reminder that uh, if you want to find out who's running for the school board, uh, tomorrow night, 7 till about 8.15, St. Saviors Anglican Church, 150 Orchard Avenue. Six candidates will be there for four spots, so they're going to actually get more than three questions. Uh, and then we have our mayoral candidate back here at the Lakeside uh, Thursday night, 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. Uh, if you can't make it out, this meeting as well as the... Um, the Thursday night one will be on uh, Peach City Radio, and we are also showing video, which should be up by the time you get home tonight of this meeting if you want to go through it or fast forward or whatever you want to do. So a Lynn Kelsey question, your question is, this community is still healing from a series of violent assaults against women and children, which dominated the news, and we all know what they are, so I won't mention them. Is there anything an elected body can do to prevent such tragic events from occurring. Thanks, James. I don't know that there's anything we can do to prevent those tragic events, but we can certainly make our community a safer community for the women and children. Um, I mentioned earlier, I work for South Okanaga Women in Need. I work with women and then children that have fled abuse. And I know many of these women that have had serious incidents happen to them. So what can we do? We can provide safe housing. I know that we're looking at trying to have second stage housing through South Okanagan Women in Need because right now somebody comes to us, they get to stay for 30 days and the bus roll quits going by at 6 o'clock so they're not safe. One of the things we can do is increase street lighting. There's places where it needs to be increased. Make sure our, our city's safe. They've got to have some place that they can be. Proper transportation and making sure that um, we are supporting them. And gentlemen, you can play a huge role in making our community safe for the women because Thank you. we need good men. Thank you. <laughs> Helena Conans, uh, it's a fairly detailed question. Council has introduced economic incentive zones and is willing to waive taxes for an extended period of time for anyone. Who will, relo who will locate a grocery store in our downtown. So there's a tax break if a grocery store will locate there. Mm -hmm. But the question from this individual is, how is this fair to Safeway, Superstore, Wholesale Club, Walmart, and especially the locally owned Marketplace IGA, which supports our community through bottle drives and countless fundraisers every year? How is it fair to the existing grocery stores? That is a really good question. Um, <sighs> Everybody here in this room I know wants a grocery store downtown. We need a grocery store downtown. Talking about making Penticton safe, getting more people to live downtown, increasing the density, the only way we're gonna do that, one of the ways is by having a grocery store. I don't like having economic incentives just for uh, a, a new grocery store that comes in because I really appreciate all those other stores. But any of those stores can open up an outlet in the downtown core and they will get uh, um, they will be a part part of that incentive program so we really encourage them to do that and uh, we really encourage uh, um, any participation in getting some type of food outlet in the downtown thank you thanks David Cornett's, uh your question is about the 30 kilometer uh, zones in the downtown. Is that not a more logical solution than narrowing Main Street to two lanes? Well, I'm in favor of the uh, 30 kilometer uh, speed limit zone in the downtown. And as far as the lanes go, if, if, if we do want, I, I disagree with the side, uh, widening the sidewalks. What I'd like to see is in the 100 block, we have one side of the street with uh, uh, angled parking. And if we put that same angled parking, extended it down on that side of the street, we would add 50% to that side for parking. We would give more parking to the downtown businesses. And I see that as a, a much better way. Most of the people I talk to, they don't come downtown because they can't find parking. So if we can increase the parking, that would might be worth giving up that extra lane for. Thank, Thank you. you. Brent Madsen, your question is, what can council do to provide more affordable housing in our community for young families and for the less fortunate? 
Well, I'm not well versed on this subject. I'm, I mean, I'm all for affordable housing. I've um, rented in Penticton for the last 22 years. Um, that being said, un unless they're willing to partner with the, the, the province and, and uh, you know, groups like the uh, Lions Club and, and the Rotary, I can't see it happening because it does not seem to be a priority for this city. It should be, just like homeless people. I know, I know people that are living in storage units so that they can still live in Penticton. So, yes, there's a need there. I would do a lot of homework and find out some better answers. Thank you. Andre Martin, through email, your campaign material already has you paving the way for a trip to UBCM next year. As a city councillor, how would you justify that expense when municipal municipal municipalities around us, such as Kelowna and Asuyus, are sending smaller numbers of delegates? Thanks, James. I, I think that's an, a great learning opportunity. Part of what I do in my daily work is learning. We, uh, you know, with Business owners that run multi-million dollar corporations have hundreds of employees and they're learning always. I don't think councillors should be any different. And that's the place you go to learn. Build your relationships with uh, provincial ministers. Uh, you actually get them. You get face-to-face -face with the minister and not somebody that works under them. And you pitch your ideas and, and your um, needs to them. It's, it's highly important. And uh, if we're a convention, a convention town, we have this beautiful convention facility, we should practice what we preach. Thank you. Thanks. Over to Doug Maxwell. Doug, via email, a detailed question here. Most candidates are saying we need to create employment. Would it not be fair to have a truck and several employees to clean up our alleys and streets of overhanging shrubs and trees and unnecessary garbage left by property owners? That would create full-time positions. What are your thoughts on this suggestion? I think it's a great suggestion. Uh, we have to make sure we can afford it, first of all, but uh, uh, one of the answers to my questions in the newspaper was that uh, we should have more teeth in our bylaw for uh, unsightly uh, empty lots and uh, neighbors who don't look after their yard and, and clean their uh, boulevards and their, and their snow removal. Uh, go down the alley, you'll see the same on the back end of it, and it's just not fair to the guys who do spend the money and look after their properties. It costs us money. Uh, and. Uh, Somehow or other, we have to find a way to, uh, to, to, to get this, so this all cleaned up. And if hiring some uh, students in the summer, for example, is one way, then let's do it. Let's, let's find the money. Janine Nicholas, although not temporarily an issue, it has been in the past, and it reads, you ran a concession stand at Skaha Beach last summer. Where do you stand on the idea of paid lifeguards during the summer months for our public beaches? Um, being a mom of two young children still and witnessing all the, the families that utilize our beaches in the summer, it's only a benefit. Um, as a city that uh, we are supporting, the uh, taking into consideration tourists and our locals, we're investing in our people. What better way than not to invest in lives? Thank you. And with that, know that as a taxpayer, there's going to be some kind of adjustment that comes with that, but it's going to be well worth it, don't you say? Buckle in the ones you love. Thank you. Kevin Noonan, if elected, what steps could you do as a councillor to assure that there would be one tourism body in Penticton rather than the present model where there's the Penticton Hospitality Association as well as Tourism Penticton? Yeah, actually there seems to be three that are working towards promoting our city and duplication of efforts has always been a problem. Um, any government has this and you have to find a way to get, like I said, the unity needs to come. We need to treat each other well. If we all work together in those three groups, there would be no overlap. Can you imagine how much farther we could take promoting our city? We would have a brand that would be unified. 
It'd be one for Penticton and sports, but it would still be the same brand for Penticton. These things, um, it's just it would be far, far more effective. I think it would be as simple as just getting the parties to agree that this is what they really want to do. Thank you. Thanks. Max picked in this question from the floor. I, the reading's quite wordy, but it's basically asking, what are your thoughts on the proposed Skaha Marina, uh, the lack of knowledge that we have, the change in ownership, and uh, future plans for possibly developing that site? Um, I think anything to do with our waterfront needs to be very carefully considered. Uh, we've got very limited waterfront in town, so it, it's going to be very important for the development to to fit in with the theme of what Penticton is and what the residents want. Um, I'm not privy to the information as to what's happening, so I can't really comment on the, the future development so much, but uh, I think this will be a very critical one to have the public input. Also, uh, this has been a very limited time for, every, for everybody to ask questions. Three questions per candidate isn't much. Um, if you guys would like, you can email me uh, through my website at pictonforpenticton.com. I'd be happy to answer all of your questions as soon as I'm able to. I'm fielding a large volume of them, but I'll get to all of them eventually. Thank you. Thank you. And just for the knowledge of the uh, audience, uh, the Herald has published everyone's email address uh, twice thus far, and uh, we will publish it again on uh, on Thursday. So, if uh, I'm sure they would all gladly answer uh, any questions that you have, if for whatever reason an issue that you're interested in didn't come up tonight. But thank you, uh, thank you, Max. And Vic Powell is up. Vic, when it comes to balancing a budget, which do you prefer, raising taxes or cutting services? Do what these guys do, right? Go into the kitty. Now, now I would uh, have to look at the project itself. Why would you have to increase taxes? Because you want to do something. If I want to do something in my home, I save up the money and do it. I don't go into debt over it. I don't owe anyone anything as far as monetary goes. That's the way the city should operate. If you got a kitty, you better hold on to it because it, one of these days, you're gonna need it. Take a look what happened to OK Falls. They had a water main break. They were without water in the whole city for a full day. Do you wanna go that way? What are you gonna do? No, I don't. I don't look at raising taxes. And if you've got to cut a project, then cut it. Thank you. Katie Robinson, what lesson did you learn from your infamous statement concerning Boonstock <laughs> Music and Arts Festival's attendees whom you described as head-banging druggies? Well, I've learned lots of lessons from that one. First one is to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> uh, before I get into that subject, though, uh, just in case there's anyone left in BC that doesn't know how I feel about that subject, I would be remiss in not mentioning that uh, I was a season ticket holder last year for the community concerts as well, and I know that Erwin Hobden is in the audience tonight, and he would be most disappointed if I didn't mention community concerts. Now, back to the other subject. Um, Obviously, my comment was not befitting the uh, position of a counselor. Uh, I was made at the end of a very long day, and I've said all my mea culpas. Uh, so just in case anyone missed it, I'll say I'm sorry once again. Uh, it wasn't meant at anyone in particular, uh, other than the fact that uh, it had been a long, stressful weekend. Thank you. Daryl Sanders, your question is, the city of Penticton uh, was involved with a long negotiating process with the Penticton Bees on a um, lease with the South Okanagan Event Center. How important is it, in your opinion, for the Bees to have a long-term arrangement with the city, even if it involves subsidizing ice time? 
The Penticton V's are a big part of our community and they should have 100% backing by the city at any given time. Thank you. Okay, Tariq, you're up. Uh, Tariq Saeed, the question, what steps need to be taken to assure that the provincial government sticks to its word and to its plan on the promised expansion of the Penticton Regional Hospital? I will keep bugging them, bugging them, bugging them <laughs> until they actually start doing something. And I will make sure that it does happen because I will call them as an elected councillor. That is my responsibility, not just for me, for you. And I will keep doing it until it actually happens. Judy Sentez, how do you justify having voted in favor of the failed hockey dormitory project in 2010, which resulted in over $1 million in liens on the property, plus large legal bills that haven't been resolved to this day? In hindsight, wouldn't we all be clever? Uh, the information that was available to council, uh, that would be legal advice as well as uh, developmental advice, led us to believe that this was something that could be achieved. Um, I think um, fellow councillor Helena Kunan said, sometimes you have to take the risk and sometimes you have to step out of the box to, to try and achieve that which uh, is desired. So if I knew today, um, then perhaps my answer would have been much different. But given the information of that day, that was the right thing to do. Thank you. Thank you. Deborah Slater, as someone who works in customer service, do you feel that City Hall and Council is doing a good job with customer service, including bylaw enforcement? Not always. I mean, they're doing their best, everybody does their best, but they're not always approachable. You can't always get to speak to your counselors when you need to. I've had um, great response by Katie here. She's been wonderful in responding to things that I've questioned her about, but not always. I think that you have to have a bit of a, bit of a better door policy, open door policy. Thank you. Campbell Watt, it's a, just a routine question. Why do you feel that you are the best person for the job of city councillor in Penticton? You can dance. <laughs> uh, to, I believe that I have been a part of our community for easily six years in the roles of chamber president, downtown Penticton Association president. Um, I've been on the city's business and community development committee, uh, the downtown revitalization committee. I'm on the local immigration partnership council. I, I sit on a couple of golf courses and golf committees and board at the golf club. I, I am about community. I'm about helping and I believe, I'm not going to say I'm the best candidate because I don't want to be derogatory to any of the beautiful people sitting here, uh, but I believe I'm a great candidate uh, and, and my past record shows it. Thank you. Steve. Steve Boldby, if elected, what would you suggest could be done to engage the public more into how their tax dollars are being spent? Invite them to council meetings. That's it? Yeah, just come to the council meetings. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, Patrick Buchanan, would you like to see more money invested in bus service in our community? Uh, yes, I would. Back when the SOEC was built, I've always wondered why there is not a bus service to the SOEC. Um, with the children that I have, we like to go to the games there. Uh, we attend quite a few things there. But driving down there, parking, walking in the cold, if there was a bus service that would go into the front of the SOEC, let us out there, 
give us time to get back in. There would be designated stops along the way. Um, I think it would benefit not only the health of the community, it would take a lot of cars off the road and it would probably bring more people that don't want to pay the parking fee, um, which I don't have a problem with. But if there was a bus service there, I would rather take the bus and drive my vehicle down. Thank you. Paula Catani, would you support a smoke-free Penticton, which would include minor fines for smoking on the beach, similar to what they do in Hawaii? Okay, you're already talking about bylaws, and Pen one of Penticton's bylaws is smoking on the beach. It's a $50 fine if you get caught smoking on the beach. Okay. Um, so you're saying smoke-free so do you support, downtown do you everywhere? Um, no, I don't, because I, th I still think that's a free right. It, it's like you drinking in front of me. I could say, put a bylaw on that. So, sorry. They've already got a bylaw for smoking on the beach in Penticton. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Don Dumino, uh, your platform includes keeping young people in Penticton, what can we do to create jobs for them in today's economic climate? <clears throat> well, I know that a lot of the jobs tend to um, be going to Alberta oil patches, for example. Uh, we have to look at our industrial area, uh, our commercial area, and bring in more, even more technology. Um, there is some land, um, available to encourage uh, more industry to come in. Um, so there's a lot of opportunity there. I think there's just, uh, we just have to look for it, um, put a concert, uh, concentrated effort more into our industrial area because it tends to be, we, we focus a lot on the, uh, the uh, hospitality and so on, but it tends to be more seasonal. Uh, with industrial, you can get more year round type of employment. Thank you. Thanks. Ryan Foster from the floor. As a strong advocate of farmers markets, is that not in direct competition of grocery stores, which both employ people as well as contribute significantly to our city's tax base? Are farmers markets in competition with grocery stores? Is that the question? That's what yes? the question is. Okay. Uh, yes, but uh, competition is a healthy thing. And actually, we, we could use more healthy competition in Penticton. We could use more local production of high-quality food and produce. Um, we could use more edible landscaping. We could propagate food forests throughout the city. Um, we talk about the need for jobs. We need quality jobs, not just any jobs. But aside from bringing in jobs, which we can do by drawing business in through incentives like reducing power costs, uh, we can reduce the cost of living in Penticton so that people don't have to work two or three jobs to be able to support their kids. We can reduce the cost of living by making food more generally available, high quality nutrient dense food to those people who need it most and generating and, and supporting um, industry uh, through power rebates. Okay, well there's a lot of really neat Th ideas. I recommend Th visiting Foster Penticton. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Thank you. Gary, Gary Grattan, the question is, is, are we reaping as much out of the South Okanagan Events Center economically as we can, in your opinion? Thank you, James. Uh, test, test. Is it on? There we go. Thank you. I think the South Okanagan Events Center was a long-term vision, very much a long-term vision. In the first five years or so, it certainly struggled. Uh, many people have been perhaps frustrated with the level of uh, taxpayer support that has occurred over the last few years. But I do think that in, in a long-term basis, it really is a very, very good thing for the city, and it will attract more money and more business as time goes on, and it will undoubtedly, with good management and good organization, become far more successful. So is it perhaps not quite there yet? Perhaps. But I think it's a fabulous center we should all be very, very proud of. And I think that the potential there for it to be just a huge, phenomenal success is, is really and truly there. And I hope that's what happens. Thank you. 
Brian Henningsen, question is, what can be done to encourage more community involvement for groups such as Citizens on Patrol and Crime Stoppers? To, to increase the involvement? Yeah, what can council do to increase volunteerism? Uh, just, just get the word out there to the people. Uh, I know that uh, Penticton is a very uh, uh, volunteer-rich uh, uh, area, uh, as seen over the many years through, uh, through the uh, Iron Man and uh, more recently the Challenge Penticton. Um, there's, there's a lot of people willing to volunteer. Um, just uh, continue to get the word out, and, uh, and that's, that's it. Thank you. And Brian Horacy, through the luck of the draw, we started with you and we're gonna end with you tonight. <laughs> so the question is, why are you opposed to vote counting machines in the election? Uh, well, I, I just want to, um, first of all, I, I agree. I don't know how this happened, James, from first to last. <laughs> um, but uh, vote counting machines are um, uh, replacing people in a democratic process in which, which is built on personal and public accountability. It's in, built on the involvement of people. Uh, it, and it goes way beyond that. We're just not talking about vote counting. We're talking about people. The decision here in this election is who's going to be involved in council and who is going to be involved in how we plan, spend our money, and how the city operates. That's the decision. And if it's going to be the people here, then you better step up because you're going to get four more years of the same thing you just got if you don't stand up and get involved. And we need public participation, and we need it formalized and standardized. In fact, we could easily start with a public participation officer, just like we have a development officer. Thank you. A couple of housekeeping items. Please bear with me for about 60 seconds. If you uh, do need a ride and you, uh, because the bus has stopped running, see the ladies at the chamber at the back. Um, thank you, audience. Uh, as I said, Thursday is mayoral, 6.30 here. School board is tomorrow at St. Xavier.